the speaker. The armed soldiers shooting the disarmed civilians. The army is beating the innocent civilians so hard as that. And the poor victims lying in the streets, bleeding. Maybe a war between two countries? Well, yes or no. It is actually a war between the government and its people, specifically a war between Junta in Myanmar and its people who are craving for democratic reforms in their country. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're here to protect the most basic rights of the Myanmar people by putting an end to violent and vicious junta in Myanmar. Our motion today, this house will dramatically increase pressure on Myanmar's junta to enact democratic reforms. Before we go on, I'm going to give you some background information about what's going on in Myanmar currently to uh, make you keep up with our debate and then give you some definitions of our motion and, uh, moving, uh, and move on to my uh, specific policy. Ever since the military coup in 1988, Myanmar, which is known also as Burma, has been governed by the military junta, which is State Peace and Development Council, which is also known as SPDC. Despite the fact that the elections held in 1990 were clearly won by the opposition side, which is National League for uh, Democracy, the NLD, the SPDC has actually refused to uh, give its power over to the NLD. In the status quo, various organizations are trying to enact democratic reforms in Myanmar. On September 27th, UN Security Council actually met together to discuss about, the, about enacting the uh, democratic reforms in Myanmar. But because China and Russia weren't favorable about that idea, it, was, it turned out to be a failure. The U.S. is also <laughs> currently imposing economic sanctions on Myanmar, but it, this is also not very effective in that it harms the poor nation while Junta themselves don't, don't even care about it. We say because current pressures are too weak to give peace to Myanmar, we should dramatically increase pressure on Myanmar's Junta to enact democratic reforms. In today's debate, we define this house as individual government dramatically as highly effective and pressure as pressure other than military force, Myanmar Junta as the current <coughs> group of military men in power after coup d'etat, and also democratic reforms as changing the junta into democratic, re democratic regime. In order to pass our motion today, we the proposition will persuade you how necessary, practical, and beneficial our, pol our, our policy will be uh, by three strong speeches. First, I as the first speaker will explain about our specific policy. Our second speaker, Jong Hyun, will uh, tell you how beneficial, practical, and necessary the policy is. And our third speaker, Dayong, will uh, explain the main clashes and explain why we want this debate. Our policy is basically consisted of two large sections. First, we will uh, actively support the freedom seekers in Myanmar. Through the status quo I've mentioned so far, we now know that, that uh, there certainly have been attempts to urge Myanmar Junta for democratic reform by various means. However, it didn't work, and I'm sure that probably it won't in the future too. Therefore, this uh, shifted our paradigm in, uh, from the uh, from contact, con contacting the uh, junta directly to just helping the freedom seekers, existing freedom seekers in the Myanmar. Uh, so we would help the people in Myanmar to fight with them. And today, many Buddhist monks and civilians are fighting against the junta to gain democratic freedom by themselves. Sure. However, as aforementioned, because of the junta's stubborn stance on stopping these democratic movements by, milita by military force, the, uh, those movements are not being really effective. Therefore, this house will financially and politically help these people to increase pressure on Myanmar junta. At the same time, we would, con uh, we would constantly send political letters to Myanmar so that they feel pressure and uh, enact democratic reforms. Yes, continuous, uh, I mean, step by step. This would definitely be super effect effective, which is also proven by South Korea's example of Gwangju Minja Undong, and this point will be further carried out by our second speaker, Jung Hyun. Ladies and gentlemen, we must not turn a deaf ear to the cries of the Myanmar people who are fighting against violent and unjust junta by sacrificing themselves. Our second speaker, Jung Hyun, will further elaborate on how our policy is beneficial, practical, and necessary. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
끊 어, 지금. 
Thank you for listening. Speaker of proposition side, I'll first rebut the opposition side's points and move on to my speech. First of all, the first speaker of opposition side, uh, Umbi, Umbi has mentioned that uh, Myanmar movement is not a democratic, pro-democratic movement. It's just kind of a public demonstration. But there's a very clear evidence that it is a pro-democratic, pro-democratic movement because the what, uh, the protest that. And, and uh, the slogan of the protest of Myanmar is uh, is like interpre interpreted as that please uh, uh, like uh, requesting Junta to uh, actually satisfy their needs like it is kind of interpreted as so it is a clear evidence that the uh, Myanmar Junta movement is a pro democratic movement. Also, she has mentioned that uh, the old mentioned about the old price old price the kind of uh, the like high oil price, but it is kind of a, it's not really natural natural phenomenon. It's like a intent. Uh, the junta has intentionally, uh, like the, uh, like what, heightened the price of oil price. It it has intentionally uh, made the price of natural gas five times uh, five times expensive than actually it was, and these are two times expensive than what it was. And I'll move on to my speech. I explain the necessity, benefit, and practicality of our policy. First, necessity. There are many reasons and evidences that. Oh no, sir. Oh no, ma'am. <laughs> there are many reasons and evidences that why this is, this policy is necessary for Burma. First of all, Jin has lost its ability to govern people and country. It is very corrupted, and its inability can be also proven. Junta only, Junta only exists for themselves. The, the general Tan Shui, who is the number first in the SPDC, spent 500 obego for wedding of his daughter. It, you know that uh, the, the people in Myanmar average is only earning a dollar for, for their living, and one, one out of three children in Myanmar is suffering from malnutrition. It's very uh, ri ridiculous. Also, the number two <coughs> in, in SPDC, Senior Jen, is known for his relationship with the drug market around the Southeast Asia. So its corruption is really is proven, and its not inability to guide the uh, government can be can be proven by mentioning uh, economic situation. <coughs> the Burma's average GDP growth rate is 2.99 percent, it which is the lowest rate of economic growth in the Greater Mekong subregion. Subregion, you know that consider, considering that Burma has was the wealthiest country in the sub, country in the Southeast Asia before the junta has dominated the government. It is, it is proven that our policy, like the pressing junta, is necessary. Next benefit. Pressing junta to eventually stop governing Burma can lead to democratization of Burma. Democratization of Burma can lead to, uh, lead to the, uh, can satisfy the needs of people and cease violence. More than 20 people died and hundreds of people, including monks and civilians, were caught in protest. Stabilizing the countries can lead to, uh, can make the Burma politically and economically, econo econ economic, economically better off. That's pro practicality. As Korea's Minjo Undong in Gwangju was aided by America, supporting, supporting anti junta force will display a certain outcome in Myanmar. America prevented the dictatorship of Korea from killing protesting people and try to intervene Korea, Korea's e poli e uh, political situation no, sir, to lead Korea to democracy and it finally succeed as we live in democratic society. Therefore, I also, and political intervention and pressure in Myanmar are, being, uh, are still being given by uh, foreign forces 
and uh, and our policy is just uh, suggesting to aid aid to aid the anti junta forces further. Therefore, therefore, uh, we want to want we want you to pass the move. Pass the move. Thank no doubt that democratic movements are one day necessary and that they are the only way to end the dictatorship. However, let us think about the non-physical pressure. Um, it is obvious that stop the dictatorship please is not going to be enough to make the members of the junta give up their power. So this team has done research and came up with the conclusion that only possible types of democratic reforms in Myanmar are economic sanctions and the reinforcement of nonviolence demonstrations. Today, I'm going to talk about the two sacrifices which citizens of Myanmar will have to face as a result of each of these actions, or in other words, why this side seeks to bring this motion down. Um, the first speaker of the pro um, before I begin, I'll rebut some of the opinions that the proposition side has mentioned. Um, the first speaker, Ojisan, has mentioned that um, what dramatically increasing is and a bit about the policy. But there were no specific dates, not really clear about how we should fund the financial um, burden that is needed to reinforce the demonstrations in Myanmar. Also, she said that the monks are helping and that we would get over the demonstrations soon, but there are already 110 deaths, and I don't think the situation will get any better as the situation gets on. Um, the second speaker of the prop team, Park jong yan mentioned that movement is pro -demo democratic according to some signs that, were, that people were holding up in the protest. However, we do not believe that all people are there for the same um, motive. And we do not believe that the demonstration itself was started on the basis of pro-democracy. Um, now I'll begin my point. First, the nonviolent pressure, more specifically, the economic sanction <coughs> is a huge problem. Think of Cuba, a country right below the United States. Cuba, a country ruled by the sole dominant dictator, Fidel Castro. Sanctions which are supposed to isolate the Castro dictatorship politically, economically, and socially have been in effect for more than 45 years and will remain in place until free and fair elections are held. <laughs> the reality, though, is that they do little more than hurt the Cuban people while the Castro brothers maintain their firm grip on power. Historically, Economic sanctions have done little to change the behavior patterns of bad governments and ruthless dictators. Nicholas Christ uh, yeah, of the New York Times wrote in 2003 that the United States imposed 85 new unilateral economic sanctions on foreign nations from 1996 to 2000. No, thank you. He also writes that sanctions, which cost U.S. companies up to $19 billion in 1995 alone, do not have any noteworthy results. A new economic sanction would not improve Myanmar's situation in any way, and even if it does, who knows how long it will take. There are worse situations to look at than something that is going to take more than 40 or something years. We should look at problems that need immediate action, and save the 40-year plan for some other time. Second, there are cases in which democratic movements have led only to stronger dictatorship. Do you remember the 518 democratic reform? 
Do you know about the recent Pakistan democratic reform? There is no doubt that these two are clear cases in which democratic reforms have accomplished exactly opposite of what they wish to accomplish. Unplanned democratic movements have only led to the proclamation of state of emergency by the dictator, and dictators have seized these chances to restrict all freedom, leading to an even stronger dictatorship than before. Ladies and gentlemen, take in mind that we, the opposition side, are not bloodthirsty savages who believe that physical force and military technology is the only way to end dictatorships. In the case of Myanmar, we do believe that the junta must be thrown off by democratic means. However, we are saying that it is untimely. We are saying that by trying democratic reforms right now, we will lead only to economic hardships and stronger dictatorship on, for the citizens of Myanmar. <coughs> Sanctions aren't a policy, ladies and gentlemen. They are a feel-good substitute for one. And about the democratic reforms, um, democratic reforms right now can only increase the death count, which is already about 110. Therefore, we believe this motion is utterly inconsiderate of the current situation, and therefore should not be passed. Thank you. I'll go for all. It's against their nature. Guys, just cut it out. <laughs> the second speaker of the opposition team has mentioned that um the this time is this huh? argue that this timing is is not enough for this timing is not good for um democratic dem democratic reform. Then, however, that doesn't mean when will it be okay for power to um. Then when will it be okay for actions to occur to make democratic reforms? Then does um then then do you mean that it should be okay for those people who are starving and like uh, having hard times under Myanmar's junta to die right now? Um, until then, that good time appears, and 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 I believe that. So I believe that there should be a dramatic increase in the pressure. Nor, nor did em they emphasize the need and the necessity of this uh, policy. So therefore, I, th I say I believe that the proposition hasn't had had didn't didn't figure out the practicality part, which I think the very good offside. What? <laughs> should not be passed and we won this debate and summarize our arguments. But before I go on, I'd like to rebut some of, uh, uh, no, uh, I'd like to, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, I'd like to uh, may, uh, say uh, why these, uh, uh, the, the critical uh, mistakes that the uh, proposition made. Uh, first of all, 
uh, in this motion, dramatically is one of the uh, most important words, and they mention no specific plans at all uh, about this. Uh, like we will, like they should have said something like, uh, we will uh, enact this policy in about three years or something. But they had, uh, they, they didn't mention anything about it. And second, uh, about the budget, they said they will financially and politically help uh, the freedom seekers uh, in Myanmar, but they didn't mention uh, how they will fund uh, this uh, financial support. And moving on to our uh, our points, uh, okay. uh, first of all, this. Uh, policy is not necessary because as uh, the first speaker of our team and be said uh, the situation in Myanmar was uh, pro uh, was occur it, it occurred because uh, of the oil prices and it wasn't uh, for the uh, pro democracy uh, movement and uh, about the practicality uh, if we uh, no, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Junta won't give up their power just because we tell them to, or uh, impose economic sanctions that aren't effective, or if uh, uh, if we fund, uh, uh, yeah. And about the benefits, uh, there there is no benefit to this policy because first of all. Uh, as Sonia mentioned, if we impose economic sanctions, uh, it won't be effective. And even if it does, it will take too much time. I uh, no, thank you. Uh, and second, uh, if we, if, as they suggested, if we support the democratic movements in Myanmar, uh, unplanned democratic movements will uh, make the dictatorship uh, regime like Junta uh, to uh, to be more strong, uh, to uh, stand more firm, uh, to uh, to react more strongly to the uh, democratic movements, and <coughs> yes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are not uh, opposing to this policy because we are uh, ignorant of the civilians that are dying, but. Uh, this policy is impractical and uh, impractical and untimely, and uh, will re result in more uh, deaths of innocent civilians uh, in that uh, unplanned and sudden democratic movements will lead to a uh, more strong dictatorship. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today, as the third speaker of the professional side, I'm going to explain the main questions that came up during the whole debate. Then I'm going to explain our policy's necessity, benefits, and practicality, and prove that why this policy should be passed. Now, before I'm going to mention about our policy, I will elaborate on the main clashes of this debate. The first, the first clash is about the economic sanction. The proportional side proposed economic sanction as an alternative method for our policy. However, our first speaker, Jisang, clearly mentioned about the economic sanction as a status quo and it is not well operating well. Thus, it cannot be an appropriate reason for opposing our policy. In addition, the second question is about the Myanmar people's attitude toward military junta. The opposition side's first speaker mentioned about oil, the oil price inflation. Umbi said that because Myanmar is suffering from problems such as extreme oil inflation, democracy is an urgent problem. Is is not an urgent problem. No, thank you, ma'am. However, what we try to say is that the oil price inflation is caused by junta's unjust unskilled regime. They raised the oil price by 66% on purpose, and that was the reason why the people protested and asked again for democratic freedom. Therefore, no thank you. 
Removing junta and change into democratic regime was the best solution about this motion. Now, let me illustrate the proportional size policy again. First, as jong mentioned during his speech, this policy is really necessary. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as jong men Mi mentioned, Myanmar is one of the poorest nations in the world, suffering from the stagnation. And they have the lowest rate of the economic growth in the greater Mekong sub-region, the Southeast Asia. However, there are some minorities who are fulfilling their greediness out of starving people of Myanmar, the Burmese government people, also called the military junta. Myanmar's present government is corrupted. So Myanmar people are suffering from the government's violence. Thus, it is necessary to increase pressure on Myanmar's junta to enact democratic reforms, which could enhance considerations for the Myanmar's nation. Second, this policy is really beneficial to both the Myanmar junta and nation. This policy would bring democratization to Myanmar, then it would fulfill the nation's desire, and naturally the violence between government and people would decrease. And also the overall economy, which people have little complaint toward, would be much more productive. No, thank you, sir. In, conclu in conclusion, in long run, it would benefit Myanmar itself, not only politically, but also economically. Thus, the, pro the, the practicality. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the right time to save Myanmar's people from junta. Since 1988, Myanmar people have been suffered from the military junta for 20 years. Now, individual governments would help them to enact democratic reforms. As Jisa mentioned in her speech, individual governments will acti actively support the freedom seekers in Myanmar. Also, we would help the people in Myanmar to fight, no, thank you, sir, to fight against military junta. Numerous governments will support Myanmar people, and it will definitely affect Myanmar's government. Does this house definitely believe that this policy is really practical? Till now, would the proposal side clearly prove that why this policy should be passed by stating the necessity, benefits, and the practicality of this policy? However, the opposition side failed to show appropriate reasons why this policy should not be passed. Thus, this policy that this house would dramatically increase pressure on Myanmar's junta to enact democratic reforms should be passed. Thank you.